We are just four days away from a government shutdown and the path forward is questionable. Now there's supposed to be a vote in the House tomorrow to try and stop it. But in the end, this whole thing may actually come down to Senate Democrats. So I'm gonna explain, and yes, I am gonna do the math for you in this video, but I want to start by being extremely clear, and this may get confusing, but I want you to stick with me. The bill that would stop this government shutdown on Friday is called a continuing resolution, a CR. This is not the same thing as the Republican budget resolution that I've been reporting on. This is the one that's the blueprint for government spending for next fiscal year. You know, this is the one that lots of people fear would make drastic cuts to Medicaid. This is not this. These are two very different things. The CR is the spending plan for right now from this Friday until September 30th. And this budget resolution that Republicans are currently working on is for October 1st through September of 2026, okay? So two different things. We are not talking about this right now. This one, off the table. This one is on the table. The continuing resolution to avoid a government shutdown this Friday. The House Speaker is hoping to vote on this as soon as tomorrow. So what's in it? Well, House Republicans unveiled their 99-page bill over the weekend, and I am not going to sugarcoat it. CRs are passed because Congress can't do its job. CRs are supposed to be used only for, like, short-term band-aids. They are not meant to be replacements for doing the one job that Congress is supposed to do, which is pass a spending bill to keep the government running. CRs are not a good way for the federal government to operate, and for the record, conservative Republicans have for years been screaming and yelling about how much they hate continuing resolutions for the reasons I just said. And now here we are with Republican leadership not only proposing a continuing resolution, but proposing one that would last for the rest of the fiscal year, so six more months. The Republicans wrote this bill with zero input from Democrats. So how are House Republicans planning to fund the U.S. government for the rest of this fiscal year between Friday and September 30th with this CR. Well, generally, continuing resolutions keep the government spending at status quo levels. And this bill does that to an extent, but this one does have some spending changes. Yes, I read it, and this Republican CR increases defense spending and increases immigration and customs enforcement spending, but it decreases non-defense spending. The House Speaker says those spending levels will be below 2024 levels. It cuts hundreds of billions of dollars from the Department of Labor, Health and Human Services, Education. Hundreds of billion dollars was cut for specific programs like rural water projects in New Mexico and the Small Business Disaster Loan Program. So that's what's in it. Now, to the math. We know there are supposed to be 435 members in the House of Representatives, but right now there are three vacancies. That means there are 218 Republicans and 214 Democrats. So if everyone is present and voting, House Speaker Mike Johnson would need to get 217 yes votes to pass this continuing resolution. But don't forget, this continuing resolution has zero input from Democrats. So we can't expect any of these 217 to come from right here. They have to come from right here, which means in order for House Speaker Mike Johnson to not lose this vote, he has to get those 217 from his membership. Now, we already know that one Republican is already a no. So we're already at 217. If he loses one more vote, the bill fails. But let's just give Speaker Johnson the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that he can keep the rest of his Republican colleagues together and he can get to 217. That's not where this story ends, my friends. Oh, no, 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 no. Now it has to go to the Senate. And don't forget, with this particular kind of bill, it needs 60 votes to pass. Right now, Senate Republicans have a 53-seat membership. And Democrats and Independents have 47 seats. Now, remember, we got to get to 60. So let's just say all of these vote yes. That means Republicans need seven Democrats to get on board. Well, that's already going to be tough. Again, for the same reasons why House Democrats may not vote for this. But there's one little wrench in this story. There's one Republican who's already a no. Senator Rand Paul hates 
continuing resolutions, he generally votes no on these things. So let's pretend like he is going to vote no again, which puts it at eight Democrats that need to vote yes on this bill in order to get it past the filibuster. Eight is a tall order to get this done. And right now, Senate Democrats are not a fan of this. They say because of the way the CR is written, it gives President Trump vast discretion to pull funding from agencies and programs that he doesn't like, even if Congress appropriates money for those programs and agencies. And they say it cuts funding for programs like Alzheimer's research, and it does not provide the funding that FEMA needs to respond to the ongoing disaster recovery from the wildfires in LA to the hurricane damage in North Carolina. So look, Nobody knows how this is going to shake out. We are going to see a vote perhaps as soon as tomorrow in the House on all of this. And I'll keep you posted, but buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy week.